Hello, and welcome to Storytime with Tristan. Join me today as we read The Tale of Peter Rabbit and practice using context clues to help us understand unknown words. Context clues help us to understand the words in our story that we may not know the meaning of. There are a few clues that authors give us, like looking at the pictures, using helping words, using words you already know, looking at examples and definitions, using synonyms and antonyms. Now, let's practice using context clues together with The Tale of Peter Rabbit, written by Beatrice Potter. Now, this book was written over a hundred years ago, so we may come across some words that we're not quite sure what the meaning is. So, we can use context clues to help us out. Ready? Let's go! Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sand bank, underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I am going out. Hmm, what do you think the word mischief means? I know that she's telling them, it says don't get into any mischief. So it's something she doesn't want them to do. And I also know that it said not to go into Mr. McGregor's garden because father had an accident there. So that sounds like he had some trouble there. So maybe mischief means not to get into any type of trouble. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what the word currant means. And when I look in the picture, I don't see any clues to help me out. But I do know that Mrs. Rabbit is buying bread and buns are a type of bread, usually a sweet type of bread. So I'm thinking currant is a food that you put into a bun, maybe like a raisin or a berry. And I do know that rabbits eat berries, so maybe a currant is maybe a type of berry that you can put into a bun. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. Let's look at the word naughty. What do you think it means? I'm seeing that Peter is doing something that mom said not to do. She said not to go into Mr. M Mr. McGregor's garden. That's exactly what he's doing. And I know it says in the on the other page that Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were good little bunnies. It looks like Peter is doing the opposite. So maybe the word naughty is meaning the opposite of good. So I'm thinking the word naughty means disobeying. First, he ate some lettuce and some French beans, and then he ate some radishes. I can look at the picture for some clues to help me with the word radishes. I see that he's eating some carrots, so I know radishes are not carrots. And I also see in the picture a little red vegetable kind of on the ground, so I'm wondering if those are radishes, if radishes are some type of reddish vegetable. And then feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of a cucumber frame, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. 
It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Hmm, I've never heard of a gooseberry net. But I can look at the picture here to maybe give me some clues. So I'm thinking a gooseberry is, is a type of berry. I see the word berry in it. And I can also see it looks like some berries in the picture. So maybe this gooseberry net is a net that you put over these berries to maybe help protect them because I know that in gardens, sometimes you put things over the plants to protect them. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. Let's look at the word sparrows. What do you think a sparrow is? Well, we can look at some clue words. I see it says friendly sparrows who flew so they can fly. And I also see in the picture some birds and I know birds can fly. So I think maybe a sparrow is a type of bird. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop up on the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. What do you think the word sieve means? I've never heard of this word before. But it says Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, and in the picture, I can see that Mr. McGregor is holding some type of container. So maybe a sieve is a type of container. And rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Kerchoo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp with sitting in that can. Let's look at the word damp. It says Peter was very damp with sitting in that can. What do you think the word damp means? I don't see any clues in the picture to help me out. But I do remember that it said Peter was sitting in a can of water. So maybe damp has, to, has something to do with being wet. After a time, he began to wonder about going lippity lippity, not very fast and looking all around. When I look at those words lippity lippity, I'm not very familiar with them, but the author has given me a clue here saying, this is a type of way of maybe walking or wandering and not going very fast. So I can kind of picture in my head how Peter is walking and not going very fast. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. Hmm. I'm wondering if Peter maybe heard some bad things about cats. Maybe that's why he decided not to bother the cat. It seems like maybe his cousin, Benjamin, maybe told him something um, about cats that made him not want to bother her. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scritch, scratch, scratch, scritch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. 
The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go, along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Huh, there's the word current again. So it says black currant bushes. Well, I said before, I think a current maybe is some type of food or berry, and here I see that there's something that grows in a bush. I know a berry grows in a bush, so maybe a current is a type of berry. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him till he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. Let's look at the word fortnight. I know when I see that word, I think of the game, but I don't think they're talking about the game here. So it says it was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm wondering if the word fortnight is, is maybe dealing with a period of time. It seems like maybe not too long ago, Peter lost his clothes before. So maybe Fortnite is talking about a few days or maybe a, a few weeks ago. I am sorry to say that Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea and she gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. Do you think Peter learned his lesson? I'm not really sure that he did. It seemed like mom didn't really know what kind of trouble Peter had gotten into. And it said in our story that this was the second time that he's lost a jacket and a pair of shoes. So it seems like he's gotten into some trouble before. Maybe he had snuck into the garden before and lost the jacket and shoes. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to be Peter's last time getting in trouble. I hope he learned his lesson but I'm not sure that he did. If you liked this story, make sure to check out the sequel, The Tale of Benjamin Bunny, and find out the adventures that Peter and his cousin, Benjamin, go on. Thanks for joining me on Storytime with Tristan. I'll see you next time for another reading adventure.